Good evening and welcome to Creative Broadcasting, the station of unlimited possibilities. Presents Creating Your Seat at the Table with your host, Ashley Little, as she welcomes her guest to the table. Welcome to Creating Your Seat at the Table. I am your host, Ashley Little. A little bit about myself, corporate professional by day, entrepreneur by night, four-time best-selling author, CEO and founder of Ashley Little Enterprises, LLC, owner and creator of Creative Broadcasting, and co-founder and owner of Talk Radio and TV Network, LLP. Tonight, we have an amazing special VIP guest by the name of Nicole Walker. A little bit about her. From teenage parent to post-education graduate, Nicole Walker has a relentless drive. Nicole is a mother, businesswoman, and leader who has failed and succeeded many times over both personally and professionally in her attainment of the empowering knowledge she now shares with the world. She has a natural ability to figure out what is broken and or missing, and she is analytical by nature. Discovering solutions for improvement personally and professionally is, is Nicole's specialty, which is where her title, Success Strategist, derives. Nicole's business accolades include being an international speaker, leadership specialist, podcast host, and business success strategist. Nicole has a passion for solving the problems she sees in leadership and collaboration over in empowerment among women of color. She is the founder of Nicole Walker Network, a leadership development and strategic planning company, offering coaching, consulting, and workshops to aspiring and seasoned entrepreneurs looking to reach the next level. Nicole uses her analytical nature to help organizations discover solutions and provide improvements in business structure, employment engage, employee engagement, and personal and professional development. Nicole is also the creator, host, and producer of She Leads Podcast, an interview-style podcast featuring leadership insight, personal experiences, and business expertise from leading women of color entrepreneurs. Discussion topics for the She Leads Podcast include self-discovery, self-leadership, mindset, personal and professional lessons learned, the landscape for women in business, self-care, personal and professional productivity, and business success strategies. Nicole is a lifelong learner, having attained her MBA in various certifications in business analyst training, instructional development and design, and project management. When Nicole isn't working, she enjoys creating memories and going on adventures with her family and friends, event planning, and strap booking. If you're interested in learning more about Nicole, on the Nicole Walker Network and or the She Leads Podcast, please go to www.nicolewalker.net. Welcome, welcome to the table, the amazing Nicole Walker. Thank you, thank you, Ashley. I always says it, say it takes someone amazing to recognize someone else amazing, so thank you for that. Thank you so much. And it is definitely, I'm honored and humbled to have you at the table today, Nicole, because you have so much wisdom and knowledge that I know you're going to share with our listeners. And your bio is amazing. So will you please tell our listeners more about your entrepreneur journey? Okay, sure. Mm-hmm. i say basically my entrepreneur journey started with my desire to own my own business. And thankfully, you know, I've been blessed to have several successful entrepreneurs in my family, which is where I believe this desire actually came from and was planted, so to say, in my heart, right? Mm -hmm. So to date, I launched four businesses on my quest for entrepreneurial greatness, right? My first three businesses didn't go as planned. (laughs) (laughs) However, right, however, the experiences and the lessons learned have been influential in helping me to grow my skills and readjust my approach for my current and future endeavors. So just a little background there, my first two businesses were in the music industry. I owned a recording studio and also managed a record label. And my third Mm -hmm. venture was starting a photography company. And fast forward, fast forward, right, my latest (laughs) and greatest, my latest and what I would consider to be my greatest to date ventures have been interesting to say the least. And it all started back in September of 2017 when I relocated from New Jersey to Florida. And when I did that, I decided that I was going to try entrepreneurship for a fourth time, and this time that I was going to take my business and myself more seriously. So what I did was upon coming down to Tampa, Florida, I attended various workshops and networking events in the Tampa area to kind of get a feel for the climate, 
to and continue to hone and grow my skill set. So in doing that, initially I decided to start a scrapbooking business, right, because I mm-hmm. love scrapbooking. <laughs> and I felt that I was, you know, I, I, was very, I am very talented in this area. I have been told that, you know, I do great work there. So I'm like, oh, that makes sense to have a business in scrapbooking. So I went to these different business events, and I started talking to people. And when I said, oh, I have a scrapbooking company, it just didn't feel right. Like something about it didn't feel like this was my it. So after doing that, just going out to these events, kind of wanting to be serious in business, I decided to hire a business coach. And Mm -hmm. after hiring my business coach, I was inspired to go into public speaking, to go into podcasting, to go into training, coaching, consulting, Mm -hmm. becoming an author, soon to be, and all of these great things, which wasn't in my initial forefront for whatever reason. And I find that to be ironic because the concepts to me aren't far-fetched considering I have experience and a background in these areas. And I even used to talk about writing a book like from years and years back. So basically I'm extremely grateful for my first business coach because he helped to birth the Nicole Walker that the world now knows. And that's a quick summary of how I got started and how I am where I am today. I love that. And it's so important. You just touched on a lot of nuggets, but um, just having a business coach, you know, that that pretty much changed your life. So could you talk more about why that's so important for, you know, people to have a business coach, somebody that they can, that believes in them, you know, and somebody that they have done research on and that can get, help them get to that next level? Okay, sure, because it's like everyone needs a teacher, right? Like nothing in this right. world is new under the sun, right? So mm-hmm. when you work to try to figure things out, alone, it could be a lot harder, it could take you a lot longer, whereby when you tap into the resources and the individuals that have been there and done that, it cuts down the time, it makes things easier. And I'll also say, because sometimes as people, we can't see the forest for the trees, how they say, right? You may be too close Mm -hmm. to a situation to even see it. And for me, that goes to, you know, as far as like public speaking and stuff like that, where, you know, this person happened to know me from years back, but like he saw that in me. And he's like, you should be doing this. And I'm like, what? I, are you serious? You know, but for some mm-hmm. reason, I wasn't necessarily looking straight at what was really the writing on the wall, so to say. Wow, wow, wow. And for our listeners that are listening, you know, make sure you invest in your business coach. You know, invest yes. in mentors and business coaches that can help you get to the next level, as Nicole has stated. So, Nicole, you have a passion for solving problems you see in leadership and collaboration and empowerment among women of color. So please tell us more about your amazing passion for helping women of color. Okay. So my passion for helping women of color is basically Mm -hmm. three parts to that passion, right? Like it's my creation of She Leads Podcast. So Mm -hmm. the first part in that is the issue I saw with, the underrepresentation of women of color on various platforms and in various levels in business. So this is what made me or gave me the desire to want to start She Leads Podcast and make it exclusive to highlighting Mm -hmm. women of color entrepreneurs. So it's like similar to, you know, the name of your show, actually, like She Leads Mm -hmm. Podcast is my effort to create my own seat at the table and promote Mm -hmm. and support other women at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. then I went into going more deeper, kind of taking a reflection of my past, right, where Mm -hmm. there's a prevalence of competition amongst women over collaboration. And over the years, I experienced, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So over the years, I experienced so much backbiting and so much bullying which really impacted my life negatively, and I decided to take it upon myself and be the change I want to see in the world, and Mm -hmm. I'm using She Leads Podcast to do so, to show that it's okay to work with a woman that's in your same industry. It's okay to celebrate another woman's win, and it takes nothing away from you. And also, with women of color, women, people in general, one of the other things that sparked She Leads Podcast is for many years, my mindset was one of my biggest roadblocks, and I had no clue about this. So 
my experiences of being exposed to the concepts of self-awareness, self-acceptance, and self-leadership literally changed my entire world, right? And basically because of this, I wanted to expose others to the information that I received so that they can adopt these principles and lead themselves and other people more effectively. And that's kind of where the hashtag for She Leads Podcast came from, which is Be Empowered and Empower One. Well, I just want to, you know, thank you for using your pain to create a space for women of color to uh, be able to have a voice, right? That's so important. And as you stated, you know, you went through those different uh, seasons of the, you know, the bullying, all that, the collaboration. So which leads me to why I want to dig deeper into this, because why do you think that women are afraid to collaborate? based off some of the things that you, some of your clients, some of the things that you have experienced, why do you think they are afraid to collaborate? Because we are better together. I agree. I agree, Ashley. And I think that women are afraid to collaborate because a lot of people operate from a mindset of lack, right? They feel that Mm -hmm. if they help someone else, then they are limiting their possibilities or their resources. Also, many people are intimidated by the shine and intelligence of others. So basically, their personal feelings of themselves are shown in their interactions with others and lack of desire to want to collaborate and build forces, so to say. And my difference is I believe in an abundance mindset, right? I believe there's an Mm -hmm. abundance of resources in this world for Mm -hmm. anyone who's willing to put in the work to attain them. Right. I also believe that what's you is for you, and you're the only person that can stunt your growth. So that's what I think women struggle with in relation to collaboration, and that needs to be broken down so that we can get past that and that we can all grow more successfully, right? So if you even think about, like, with collaboration, and I look at that, too, like, even in a workplace, right, where let's say it's a leader. Like, I experienced that a lot where – a leader didn't want to pour into me and maybe it was for intimidation or things like that, right? So I equivalent that to collaboration as well, right? So where I feel like when a student grows or surpasses a teacher, it doesn't take away from the teacher. It actually is a testament to the teacher's ability to nurture and empower others, right? So like if Mm -hmm. you're leading and the people that you're leading aren't growing or they aren't evolving, then you're not doing your job as a leader. So why not? Like, why not? Let's make life easier for ourselves because we get more help and we can do more things with more people. It's just it's a power in numbers, you know, and, and we can all be great. And it takes nothing away from any of us. Right, because I'm a big believer in that we all can win. And we also have to make sure that, you know, because people talk about collaboration a lot, that we're actually collaborating too, that it's not one-sided, right? that it's mutual, that both people Mm -hmm. are winning. And I think some people say collaborate, they speak about collaborate, they get on platforms about collaborate, but they don't really know how to collaborate, right? Mm -hmm. It has to be effective and it has to be reciprocal too. So I think people got to keep that in mind too and actually know that, okay, when we're collaborating, both people should be winning and it should be reciprocal. And if it's not, then we're not collaborating, right? Not effective. (laughs) Yes, and I'll even add to that, right? Like, and that goes to me Mm -hmm. to authenticity, right? And I noticed that upon entering into this industry where, let's say, someone says women empowerment, but yet behind the scenes, you don't feel that. Like, you can feel things. A person can tell Mm -hmm. whether you're real or not, whether you're just using Mm -hmm. some of these. I feel like maybe collaborate and empowerment are like buzzwords right now, and everybody wants to jump on the train. But if you're really not operating in that space, it's not hard to see that. So we need to be real and really believe in this so that we can do it effortlessly and, and do it effectively. Yes, I love that, doing it effortlessly and doing it effectively and being authentic. That is so important, Nicole, and you're right, because people can read right through it. Yes, I, I mm-hmm. definitely agree. So what? can you please share with our listeners some different examples of how collaboration ha- has helped you get to the next level when collaborating with the right people have helped you? Okay, well, I'll say, and I'll just give an example <laughs> of with She Lee's podcast, just sticking with yes. that, where mm-hmm. – like, I look at me and my interview guests as collaborating, right? So mm-hmm. I've been able to collaborate with these amazing female entrepreneurs. You actually was one, so thank you for that, right? Yes, and in uh-huh. doing so, <laughs> yes, so 
in doing so, we create basically content together, right, because it's an interview, so we're co-creating content. We spread the message about each episode together. And for Mm -hmm. me, without the Women of She Leads podcast, there would be no She Leads podcast. Like, I can't interview myself, right? Right. So from this collaboration, my platform was created. My platform has grown immensely since March of 2018. I want to say in the beginning months, I was getting, like, maybe 300 downloads a month for the four episodes that I put out an episode per week. And fast forward a year later, and I've reached numbers as high as over 1,200 in one month. You know, so just the growth of getting more women involved, you know, more exposure from people believing in a cause, that is how collaboration has propelled me to the next level. And also I want to point out, too, that when I interview with some of these women, Some of them are in the same industry as me. Some of them are leadership development specialists. Some of them are business specialists. They promote their business on my platform, and this takes nothing away from me. And I feel like it's actually, yes, it's actually more of a blessing than it is an actual threat, although we provide services in the same industry, right? And because of these interviews, I've been able to build some amazing bonds with women. I've been able to form great relationships with these women that to me is priceless and, again, has taken me to the next level. And also because of it, I have great opportunities like being on your show today, like having different speaking engagements and things like that that were a direct result of people hearing about She Lee's podcast, seeing my commitment and my efforts towards it, and asking me to speak at their different events. So collaboration has definitely taken me from where I was to where I am today. And the key thing was it took nothing from you, and what's for you is for you, right? It took nothing yes. from you. It took nothing from It was a blessing. So I, yes. I just love and I want listeners to understand that that's effective collaboration, right, that we both can win together. I love yes. it. I love it. So let's talk about the amazing Nicole Walker Network and some of the services that you have under your network and how listeners can support and utilize your services if they need to. Okay, so Nicole Walker Network is here to help aspiring and seasoned entrepreneurs succeed. So in doing that, we focus on brand and company organization, which includes services to help entrepreneurs create and update their mission and vision statements to establish the company culture and code of conduct, as well as to determine and document operational procedures, just to name a few. And the idea behind that is that having a strong foundation is so important for business success, and we aim to help entrepreneurs establish the basis needed to thrive, and it's really similar to building a house. If the foundation is unstable, the house won't last, and we want to see businesses last the test of time by having a solid and strong foundation. Another area that we focus on is employee engagement and retention because this is an issue that many businesses face, and it directly impacts the company's growth as well as their bottom line. So at Nicole Walker Network, we we explore the roadblocks that are present, which inhibits productivity. And we want to ensure organizations have processes in place to promote autonomy for their team members, to increase communication, as well as boost employee morale. Like we really understand and take the core need people have to feel valued and their desire to be a part of a cause they believe in seriously. And we made it our mission to help others understand this as well. And Mm -hmm. our other area, one more, (laughs) our other area is professional development, right? Because professional development helps to foster individual and company growth. So a few areas that we provide professional development assistance in is conducting training needs analysis, providing career track planning, training, design, as well as delivery, and also we help to create learning effectiveness assessments and reporting, and that's just a high-level summary. So in a nutshell, we thrive off of discovering the success strategies needed to get started in business, to create a solid foundation for your business operations, to establish transparency within your organization, to increase productivity, and to scale, which for any business, this is what's needed if you want to be one of the Fortune 500, so to say. 
Yes, I love that. And the employee morale and the professional development, that's so important that, you know, people are trained because a lot of people leave companies, corporate America, and sometimes in business because of that. It's not normally yes. it's not the company or the business, it's the people, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, so that's definitely important. So how can listeners find, you know, the whole net, you know, where can, where can they go? Could you tell them one more time the website? So they can go, um, you know, take a look and see if they need to sign up for some of your services or even spread the word to let people know about your services. Yes, yeah, so they can go on www.nicolewalker.net. That's N-I-C-O-L-E-W-A-L-K-E-R dot N-E-T. And you can basically link out to all of my social media outlets from my website. And then if you want more information on She Leads Podcast, it is – pretty much available on just about every podcast streamer available. You can Google it to get the information. You can go to Apple, what is it, iHeartRadio, Google Play, or whatever name they're called now. I know they keep changing that name, Spotify, and a couple of others. And then if you want to follow She Leads Podcast on Facebook, the handle is at She Leads Podcast. And this, speaking of She Leads Podcast, I want to touch back on it because – I was a guest, as she stated, and it was amazing, amazing experience. So, Nicole, could you talk a little bit more about how people can be a guest, you know, the type of the type of people, of course, I've already stated, you know, the type of people that you interview, but the type of people that, you, that you're looking out to bring on your show and how often do you run your show? Can you talk to them a little bit about that? Okay, yeah. So, She's Podcast runs by season, and I we include 18 episodes per season. It airs weekly on the different platforms. And to be a guest, I'm actually, we're actually working to streamline that process and we'll be putting some forms and things like that in place. So I don't have all of the details for that yet because we are planning to revamp the process for 2020. I'm actually already recording for season five which will air from the first week of September through to the last week in December. So we're done for 2019, but 2020 we're putting together a brand new process and people will be able to automate that sign up and to show that interest. So stay tuned to the, our Facebook page and possibly even the website for more information on that in the future. Well, super congratulations on She Leads Podcast. I mean, you've done for the year, booked for the year. This is amazing, Nicole. Super congratulations you. on your podcast. It's amazing. And, you know, we, we talked about collaboration. We talked about all the great things that you're doing with your network and the services that you have. But one thing I wanted to touch on tonight was about how it's so important to reinvent yourself, right, to continue to reinvent yourself. So can you talk more about that? Yes. Basically, my view on reinventing yourself is that there's always room for improvement. And if we want to stay on the cutting edge of business or the cutting edge in life, then we need to evaluate our current standing and make the necessary adjustments to improve as often as possible. And in thinking about this, I like to equate it to a plant, for example, right? Plants don't stop producing leaves. Right? Even if they're in a small pot, what ends up happening is old leaves end up dying and new leaves mm-hmm. come out. Right, So something is always happening even with a plant. So I feel that something always needs to happen with us as humans. We always need to find a better way to treat people, find a better way to do our business, find some way that you can improve because none of us are perfect and none of us will ever be perfect. So there will never not be a way that you can reinvent yourself if you're willing to take those moments to do some self-reflection and put in the work to do the, to make the adjustments needed to continue to sharpen yourself so that that. Right. And it's so important that we do that, right? We continue to do that personally, professionally, that self-care plays a part, right? It plays a part in reinventing yourself because if yes. you're not healthy, you can't pour into no one else. And I know you speak exactly. about that too a lot. Yes. Exactly. So I know that you already pretty much have built your table, Nicole. I mean, everybody has listened tonight, and we know that you have built your table. But I always ask my guests this question. How did you create your seat at the table? Okay. So basically, I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. 
right? And that's that's the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, that's a high level summary. But it basically was after years of waiting for validation, waiting mm. for promotion from my employers, from my loved ones, from my friends, from whomever. I decided to take matters in my own hands, right? I always knew that I had more to offer the world and I wasn't being given the opportunities I wanted to prove this. Mm-hmm. So it came to me actually taking the time to consider my gifts, consider my strengths, look at my passions, decide what I wanted to do, where I wanted to offer my services and and working to create a business around that. Like, uh, that, to me, it in a nutshell. And it's so important that you spoke on it because creating, we have to create our own opportunities, right? And we can't worry about what people are going to say. They're going to talk about if we're doing good or when we're doing bad. But we have to stay focused on our journey and do it scared and do it anyway. So that, yes. that's so important. And I think a lot of people sit on their dreams or miss their dreams or, you know, later on say, I would have, could have. Because mm-hmm. they're worried about what people are saying, but we have to be able to stay focused on us and do it regardless of the critics, because so they're going to be there. Yes. So we all have our journey, you know, and pain helps us get to that next level, and we have to learn how to embrace that. So what did failure teach you on your journey? Oh. <laughs> 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 Ooh, what didn't it teach me, right? Okay, so... <laughs> Uh, failure has taught me what not to do, right? So basically, okay. I believe you don't know what you don't know, right? And more times mm-hmm. than not, we have to go through to get through, right? So in mm-hmm. in going through failures, we have the opportunity to learn better ways to achieve our goals. And having this mindset, or the, I have a mindset of I don't fail, I either win or I learn, right? So it's, it's no failure, it's no losses, it's either wins or lessons, and those are both blessings, right? And when I changed my mindset to realize, like, yes, that may have not have gone the way I wanted it to go, Mm -hmm. but now what? Now what? Because it's not over until I'm dead, right? So if you allow a failure to stop you in your tracks, then what are you doing? Like, you know, you have Mm -hmm. to reframe how you look at things. You have to sit down and do an assessment of where you failed, why you failed, and then come up with solutions to avoid that in the future, you know, or come up with mitigation plans to work around those failures. Because they're all lessons, right, and they're all a part of the process. I think a lot of people want to skip the failure, right? They want to skip the lessons and get to yes. the end result. But well, we have to get through the pain and the lessons and, the and you know, getting it wrong in order to get to yes. that next level. We mm-hmm. do. Yeah. So what makes and, and you learn better. Oh, sorry. You're right. Go ahead. No, you learn better. Go ahead. Yeah, you learn better, right? It, it sticks to you more when it's something that is disappointing, so to say, right? Let, let's even look at a kid. When a kid touches a hot stove, they more than likely won't touch it again because they burnt their hand, right? But if you tell them, don't mm-hmm. touch that, don't touch that, they'll probably keep trying until they actually burn their hand, and then they won't mm-hmm. try again. So those failures actually create an imprint on us that allows us to do better for not wanting to repeat those same mistakes. And the key thing is we have to just learn not to give up, right? And that's the the key. I think some people get stuck in that that part, in that pain, and they don't know how to come out of it. But if you can make it through that, you will see it is a light at the end of the tunnel. You just have to endure it, you know? Correct. I agree. Yep. So what did success teach you? Because you're very successful. So what what did success teach you? Thank you. So, look, not to sound too cocky, right, but success taught me that I'm amazing, right? And, I mean, and you need to know that you're amazing, (laughs) right? So it taught me that I'm amazing. It taught me that I can do anything that I put my mind to. And this was super important for me because I suffered with self-esteem issues for so long, right? So when you are unsure of yourself, you know, having success gives you confidence that you may not have had without it. And that feeling of achievement basically did so much to boost my esteem and help to propel me forward. 
And then it allows me to set larger goals and take bigger risks in the attainment of more success because it's sort of like, oh, I did that? Oh, then I could do this. You know, so it, it's just it's just a, what do you say, like a, a snowball that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, you know, as it goes down and it collects more snow and just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So once you achieve a success, it gives you what you need to continue to do so. I love it. I love it. Love how you put it all together because that's so important, right? And once you once you get that level of success, you got to remember to stay humble. So I love that. Yes. I love that. Yes. Yes. So what can we expect from Nicole the rest of 2019? I mean, you already booked throughout your show for 2019, <laughs> so we know that's already done. So what else can we expect from you? For 2019, well, I am working my hardest to finish writing my book. This year, yes. So hopefully within this year I am finished so that by sometime next year, and I'm not going to throw any dates out because I've been throwing out dates that I've had to push back and push back and push back because they weren't realistic for my situation and I couldn't meet them. And and then I had to be okay with that, right? So Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that I'm going to work my hardest to finish this book in 2019. So that's something that you can expect to hear about in 2020. So keep your ears open for that. I'm also working on a few other ventures that I am keeping in the bag until they are a little more solid. So just, you know, keep your ears open because Nicole Walker has a lot to offer the world and this is only the beginning. Yes, she does. And Sue, congrats on your book in advance. And all the Thank other you. amazing things that you're going to do this year. And I want you to let our listeners know one more time how they can follow you on all social media platforms. Okay. So the easiest way to follow me on any social media platform that I am currently on is to go to my website, which is www.nicolewalker.net. And that's spelled N-I-C-O-L-E-W-A-L-K-E-R dot net and from there there are links to my facebook page my instagram page my linkedin page as well as my twitter page yes so please follow and support her she is definitely a powerhouse someone to know so definitely follow nicole walker and i would like to thank you nicole for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to come to the table today was an amazing interview and i look forward to bringing you back Thank you, Ashley. I so appreciate this opportunity. So thank you to you as well for having this platform as well as welcome, welcoming me to sit at the table. You are welcome, and super congratulations on everything, on all your success. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to give a special thanks to Tammy Collins Marquis and John Schamberger. I would also like to give a special thanks to author Kimberly McLemore and to my intern Sarah from Tennessee State University and my intern Savon from Virginia Commonwealth University. You all may follow me on Facebook at Ashley Little and on Instagram at underscore Ashley A. Little. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Creating Your Seat at the Table, where Ashley speaks with corporate professionals, celebrities, entrepreneurs, authors, and speakers who are transitioning or have transitioned to entrepreneurship. 